still of them for too long, but it's a little troop of vervet monkeys that are walking across the road. And I actually just saw their tracks very briefly, and I was thinking that the tracks look quite fresh, and well, there they are, just disappearing into the riverbed. And at this time of the day, you'll find, because it's been really hot and warm, the monkeys have been out and they've been looking for food. So they'll have been looking for all kinds of different food items and berries and things like that. And now that it's starting to get a little bit later in the day and it's starting to cool off a little bit, they start to make their way towards these riverbed areas. And the reason why is because in riverbed sections, big tall trees exist. And it means that these guys can go up into there and they can stay nice and safe and away from all these lions and that are lurking about in this area. It's amazing how quickly they disappear though. Although I can still see one there, Craig. And let's have a look. No, nope, they just ran away. They were sitting in the shade, but they've just run. Uh -oh. Seems to be our luck this afternoon. Things are disappearing on us. Oh wait, there we go. Try reverse a little bit, Craig. See if we can't keep it in sight for a little bit longer. No, you're going to disappear as well. <sighs> the monkeys are giving us the runaround. They're making it quite difficult for Craig to keep them because they keep sort of moving and running behind things and then as we're leaving, they jump out of nowhere. I wonder if it's not gone to go for a drink. I just want to quickly check a little bit further forward. In fact, they have. That's exactly where they've gone. There we go. So they're all just having a little drink from the ever drying cello pan. It's starting to get quite low. There we go. So, Arbeard, hello Arbeard, how are you? I hope you are very well. Um, we want to know whether the vervet monkeys will use rocks as a tool. Well, I would imagine that they could. I've never seen them do it. It's not to say that it hasn't happened and there might be documented evidence of them doing it. I know that monkeys are incredibly intelligent and, well, if a rock helped them to be able to break open things, then it is very possible. I just personally have never seen it myself. Like I say, it's not to say that that isn't a possibility and isn't something that does take place. But aren't they very cool? You can see not very often we get to see them drinking like this. So this is quite a special sight. I actually can't remember the last time I watched monkeys drinking. And they, it's normally because they're so sort of shy and skittish. These monkeys obviously come from a lodge somewhere because they don't care at all about us. And are happy to come and have a nice drink. And a beautiful light on them as well. And see a few reflections as they walk past. Now what is immediately noticeable about the vervet monkeys in comparison to the baboons is not only are they much smaller, but look at the length of their tail and how the tail is carried in comparison. And it makes actually tracking these guys quite easy because you see, look how the tail drags. So wherever you find their footprint, you'll find a dragging tail behind it, whereas the baboon's tail doesn't drag at all. And look at their agility. Absolutely amazing the way that they're able to climb and that's all because they've got that prehensile thumb that's able to grip and much like our hands they've got that on both their feet and their hands and that allows them then to climb these trees with absolute ease. And a few little babies playing around as well. I've got to say, this is probably one of the best vervet monkey sightings I've had in a very long time. Generally, we see them in the lodges and they're up to no good trying to steal food and trying to get into the kitchens and things like that. But out in the bush, it's seldom that we actually get to spend any time with them. They're normally high up in the trees and the only time we really take notice is when they are making a bit of noise and alert to a leopard or a lion and that's normally kind of how we find them. But very seldom we get to see them like this. Well, Alicia, you say you've never seen monkeys on Safari Live before. And I'm glad that this is the first time and it's probably one of the best monkey sightings I've had in a long, long time. So I'm glad that you've finally got to see them. They are such cute animals when they are playing around and not trying to get into your room or into your kitchens or things like that because when they are like that, they are very naughty. But when they're out here, they are very cute. And you can see the little babies They'll often have lots of games and they'll tumble around together and play fight, much like naughty children. They're exactly the same. There we go. Off we go. Don't get left behind. Look how cute it is. So, Alicia, you want to know what other types of monkeys live here? Well, unfortunately, we don't have any other monkeys as per se. We've got the baboons, which is part of the ape family. And then we've got 
bush babies, which is also a primate, but not a monkey at all. So this is the only monkey we get in this part of the world. There are other monkeys within South Africa, but here in the Kruger National Park, or more specifically, Juma and the Sabi Sands, it's just the vervet monkeys. And you can see that's a male. If you look under his tail, he's got bright blue testes, which is very easy to tell the, the male from the females. It almost looks like they've been shot with a paintball gun between the legs, and it's now swollen up and taken on the color of the paint as well. But it's very easy to see the sort of big dominant males because their testes go that bright powdered blue color. It almost looks like two bird's eggs that are hanging between his legs. And so... A nice way to be able to sex monkeys. Here comes a little one that looks like it might go up the tree. You know, it's going to come and have a drink. There we go. And see how it's actually going through. It looks like it's going through some of the dung there. And you'll find that these vervet monkeys do sometimes do this because they'll be able to find things. And it's actually eating the green grass. It's not going through dung. It's going through green grass that is growing in the mud. So that's nice, fresh, tasty grass that it's battling to find anywhere else. And so. It's probably why it's busy eating it. What's wrong? Did you get a fright? <laughs> so, Lauren from Illinois, you want to know if the monkeys eat meat or if they scavenge? No, well, these vervet monkeys, no, they're herbivorous. They m will pretty much eat all things vegetarian, although in Unfortunately, people do feed them things from time to time in some parts of the world, and they will sometimes readily eat cooked meat. I've seen them taking hams and cooked steaks and all kinds of things like that, which they do eat. But generally, in the wild, they're going to be going after mostly fruit and, and herbivorous items. The baboons, however, are very different. The baboons will scavenge heavily, and they will even hunt for themselves. And so at this time of the year, the baboons kind of are quite w sly and wily. They go and they'll try and spend time around the impalas and help with looking out for predators. But as soon as the lambing season comes, then you'll find the baboons become a predator of those impalas and they'll actually try to start going after those lambs and hunt them and try and bring them down. So baboons definitely will scavenge and definitely will hunt. But these vervet monkeys, no, not so much. They're more into insects and fruits and those kind of things. Quickly catch up before you get lost. All the rest have gone now. There we go. <laughs> and look at how long the tail is. So that tail is going to be vitally important with being able to balance and to when climbing to make sure that they don't fall as they go. Big long tails mean that they'll definitely be able to counterweight things. Christine, you're wondering if they can hang from the tree with their tail. Well, no, Christine, I, they can't hang from the tree with their tail, and I've never seen them do it. But what you will find when they're sometimes sitting in a tree is that they'll loop their tail around, and it'll just add as an extra stability. So the hands are still there, but the tail just helps with trying to stay a little bit more stable and trying to sort of keep themselves from falling. So their tail is used a lot, but it's more just to counteract the body weight and help in, in a balancing situation. So when they climb, you'll find the tail will move and counteract the weight of the body itself. But that was very cool. That was a very, very cool sighting indeed. I